Well, I'm coming back to you today from a recent post about the state of my aquarium and how uh, during my travels and uh, lack of being home and even when I was home, not really uh, spending time with the aquarium to keep up with the maintenance and the normal parameters and, and that. Uh, but I got to tell you, um, it's quite humbling to uh, post your failures on the internet. And it got me thinking a little bit, and that's why I wanted to come back and tell you a little bit about uh, where I am just a few days later. In that, uh, I purchased a few new bulbs, uh, T5 bulbs, and and um, got me to thinking we need to consider our marine aquariums a little bit more holistically than just water quality. There's more to it than... Uh, than just jumping on the bandwagon and saying, hey, your nitrates are too high, your phosphates, did you check your alkalinity, and did you check your calcium levels, and it's it's more than that, it's, uh, it's everything, it's all that, and uh, lights, and temperature, and all those different things, and I hadn't even thought about temperature, my aquarium's been a little bit on the cold side. Uh, so I'm going to remedy that solution as well as uh, the, the T5 bulbs. So I got the ATI Coral Plus and I also purchased an ATI Purple Plus. And I'm trying that uh, combination. I hadn't tried that before. Um, they're in there now. I just put them in. Uh, and you can look at the aquarium uh, under those lights. And it's uh, early morning and so the corals aren't extended yet. But I will tell you that I am dubbing over the audio um, later in the afternoon. So as of right now, um, I can tell you after the day's gone by that the, the Duncan and the other curls are responding extremely well. And so I'm very pleased and have uh, good hopes that the, uh, the lights were the problem. And of course, this is why we should be taking notes of the things that we're doing to maintain our aquarium wherever possible. And I was convinced, I mean, I had believed in, in myself that my bulbs were six months old uh, in January. And yeah, I let it go to March, but I had thought, so I thought January was the six month mark. And it was not. It uh, Going back and looking at my notes, I... Um, it said 2016. And what? I mean, 2016? My bulbs have been in there since 2016? And yet I was convinced, I mean, that, uh, did I not write it down? Or one or the other. Either they're that old or I didn't write it down. But, uh, I think back now, I, I'm sure I wrote down the last time I put bulbs in. And, uh, I just had it convinced it was not that long ago. And, yeah, it is a good example, a prime example, of why we do take notes and why we should check up on them and, and see what they are. But uh, I will continue working on the other things. I changed out my media. I also changed out my UV light, which uh, I don't think has anything to do with the coral problem, but uh, making sure everything is, uh, all my filtration and all, all the other stuff is all up to snuff since I have time to do so. Well, one of the things that's been on my mind is whether or not my aquarium has been uh, at a good temperature. Uh, one of the things I do is I try to stay low maintenance, low cost. Um, one thing I'm, I don't think I've ever mentioned before, but years ago, probably back in the 1990s, I, uh, I had a nano tank. And um, it was a 10-gallon nano. And I had some, I think some brackish water or maybe all salt that I I had collected some some of my own sponges and critters and some fish and uh, had it set up in one of my kids rooms and the heater went bad and overheated and, and it destroyed everything um, at least killed off the fish and, and many of the other uh, invertebrates and stuff and so uh I've hadn't really used the heater since, and I'm rethinking that 
uh, that process of that uh, attitude, to be honest with you. I also learned that um, uh, through it that when, when the heat went up, uh, it went up to, I think, near 100, 90, over 90, uh, 95 to between 95 and 100, if I remember right, um, something else happened. The tank uh, didn't just go sterile. In fact, it came alive with things I'd never seen before. The whole tank uh, uh, was overgrown with um, like an orange slime. It kind of, maybe it was an orange sponge, but kind of like an orange slime sponge. Never even, never even thought about this. And, and all because uh, the temperature went up so high, the stuff had uh, bloomed. And... So there, there's something to be said about uh, you know discovery and even in in failure, in this case equipment failure. Um, interesting to say the least. But I uh, now rethinking uh, how reliable heaters are. Um, I wouldn't mind if people would post tell me what heaters you're using and. Because I've, I've been online and I'm reading reviews on just about every brand out there. All the good brands, even the cheap brands. And they all have between 10 to 20 percent um, negative reviews. I mean, really bad. And, and, and I'm talking uh, heater failure. And I'm thinking 10 to 20 percent heater failure on all of the brands, even the better names. Um, that's, a, that's a risk. And so, uh, you like to hear what some of you uh, have to say about that. And uh, I considered what I want to do is get the proper wattage for my tank, of course, but to get two of them and run two of them. Some say that takes a little strain off the the, uh, the heater where it's not having to run as hard, even though it's the proper wattage, plus it protects your tank if one of the heaters do go bad. Um, but in my case, the heater... Uh, went bad in the sense that it ran the heat way up uh, That's a nano tank and a larger tank probably not as high of a risk. The other thing I, I uh, heard about was that Heaters may be going bad because if there's not enough flow around them, they get too hot so one of the things to, to, to care for or To look out for and to, to take care of your heaters make sure there's plenty of work water current going over it and that uh, they don't overheat and, and, uh, and shorten their life and, and go bad on you. But I really do would like to hear some of your recommendations and some of your experiences concerning heaters and uh, I think at this point I want to put one in. Looking at the temperature of seawater at Key West and you know I have a uh, Caribbean reef tank and so uh, one of the things uh, I have known and the reason why you may say well how is it you even came to the place that you didn't consider having a heater well I came to the that conclusion through my own experience and sometimes experience uh, can overrun your knowledge and that is uh, that is something to be considered, and I want to say this, thinking about that, uh, a lot of times our experiences end up being our beliefs and turn into our belief system and, and even overrun uh, what we know uh, logically or what we know from knowledge. And so we got to be careful with experience because... Um, Knowledge, and, and I'm talking about knowledge, that even knowledge that we get from the internet or from the forums and from other places, is combined experience. Where my experience is just my experience. But uh, the knowledge of, of everybody's combined uh, is more significant than mine alone. And I think we all should consider that. Just because we have experience in something doesn't mean we know the end all. Uh, because our experience is limited to our particular situations and, and uh, circumstances. And, and so in my experience of having, of having dived and snorkeled doing both uh, in the Florida waters, that I know that the reefs get cold water. So how cold would that be? And... Uh, 
on average, um, its uh, annual average is 79 degrees, uh, but it can get as cold as 69. So the months of January 69, February 70, March 75, May 82, these are the average temperatures for Key West, uh, water temperatures. And then in the summer months of August 87, July 87, September 86, giving us a yearly average of 79. So um, I'm thinking that, yes, uh, the, my experience had told me I didn't need to have a heater because my house doesn't get really below that. And my tank, actually, I measured the temperature today. It was at 73 degrees. So not terrible. But on average, I'm thinking my tank is over over a course of time staying a little bit too cold, and uh, and now considering getting a heater. Yes, the reef environment does have a couple months where it can get down uh, 69, 70 degrees, um, or even uh, in some years even a little bit colder. Uh, but we don't want an average over the course of a year and over the course of time being that cold and so that's really my thoughts now and and why I want to reconsider and possibly get a heater but why I mean why do I resist technology so much and I want to talk about that a little bit if you're wondering is it just because I'm cheap or is it because well some of it was in the beginning is because I was cheap but some of it now where I can afford some of the, the technologies and the dosers and the, and the reactors and the electronics and the lighting and all the other things that come along. Um, why do I still resist it and try to stay uh, low maintenance and, and um, low tech? Well, I, you know, part of the reason you know is because I travel so much that I need to keep low maintenance and I need to keep the easier corals and and, and overall easier bio load on on the overall fish tank so yeah that's all true but I have it within me a desire and always had to keep low tech as possible and not jump into into all the high-tech equipment simply because I have I'm driven in such a way that I want every kid that has an interest in the hobby and has some imagination to be able to explore and discover with the marine aquarium if he wanted to it's, it's almost as if i want to prove that it can be done without all of the technology and all of the expense and all of the money that yes you can as i was in my early years can go out to the ocean and just pluck out critters and uh, pipefish and seahorses and brittle stars and slugs and and uh, just living rock and things put them in an aquarium and, and keep them alive and even some simple corals with just now with LED lights and T5s that are economically feasible for even for the younger person of interest so, I mean, that's really uh, some of my thoughts of why I try to stay so low-tech. And I don't know if it's a proof of study or, or lessons learned that it can be done and it can be done over a long period of time. And in my case, this aquarium is, uh, has been going for, for, for quite a while. Part of what I wanted to do is, too, as I was talking, just let you take a look at my blue tang. Um, I really love this fish and so I wanted to give it plenty of uh, film time if you will so hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching my blue tang and my and the, my other fish swimming around a little bit as I ranted on and well, it was good talking to you again and airing off some of my thoughts and where we are and where my aquarium is and and uh, I think I'm definitely on the road to recovery so we'll catch you next time